Come on, everyone. The time the love is here at these troubled days. We done. Hmm. Wow. Let's see here. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, everybody. I often sit and wonder how things could be this way. I guess we better tell them this is a brand. New day. Don't leave it up to the other man or to another day. Take your life into your hands. Make it work out your way. It's not the number of times you stumble down and fall upon the ground. It's the number of times you pick yourself up and keep on moving on to meet your goals. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. This is Dr. Herbert. And it is Wisdom Wednesday. Hey, Lynette Jackson. Lynette Carrington, thanks for joining us. Dak 1K, thanks for joining us. Let's see, Parks Carlos, thanks for joining us. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is Wisdom Wednesday. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Love talking to you today because we got to give you a key today that's going to be the secret to take you from where you are to where you want to be. You know, all of our topics are based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. Today, uh, we're looking at chapter 11, The Law of Persistence. And I want to invite each and every one of you to go to our website, our link tree, www.herbertharris.info, herbertharris.info. And all kinds of goodies there, the free, uh, wealth building audio, a booklet on setting your goals, but most of all, learn about our home study course. Because if you want to prepare yourself for this year to be in a position to make next year your year for outrageous success, that home study course is the key. So go to our link tree, herbertharris.info. Wisdom Wednesday. Dr. J, by the way, is in transit. She is working. She just did a, um, a re-engineering workshop on Sunday. I spoke there and man, she helped so many people. I, I tell you, as a re-engineer, Sharia Moore, thanks for joining us. As a re-engineer, Dr. J is the best. And when she says re-engineer your life, it's almost like remodeling your home. It's like doing what you have to do to make it exactly the way you want it to be. One of the keys to transforming your life from what it is to what, it, to what you want it to be is persistence. And the thought is this. So many times we have great ideas. We have great goals. We have things that we want to do. We want to be. We want to have. But when the road gets tough, we don't get going. We quit. And the law of persistence really says you have to continue doing what you're doing with faith to get the desired results. The spiritual principle says, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened, ask and you will receive. But it doesn't say how long. And how long really depends on the season for that which you're seeking and the level of your desire. Let me say that again. Your goals, the things that you desire will manifest in your life based on the season of the goal itself and the level of your desire. Example, if you want to plant, if you want to feed your family with corn and you plant the seed today, you cannot eat of that corn next week or two weeks from now or three weeks from now or 30 days from now because that corn has a cycle. Corn takes about 60 to 90 days to grow. And so even though you may desire to feed your family and believe me, if your family's hungry, they want you to feed them. Even though that desire may be there, 
it is superimposed upon the rhythm of the thing that you want. In your life, when you look at the things you want to do, the things you want to be, the things you want to have, look at them in terms of their cycle. It's not just how bad do you want it, but everything has a cycle of itself. The scripture says to all things is a season. And so understand the cycle of that that you want. Because it's very easy to set yourself up for failure by desiring something and having an expectation of it manifesting in a way that's not in accord with the season of that that you desire. So if you want, there are a lot of us that want to go back to school. And how long will it take you to get your degree, whatever it is? Well, where did you stop? So I never went to school. Well, you, maybe you need to go for the full ride. So how long will it take you? It may take you four. To, if it takes four years to get a degree, then that's what it is. Now, you may be able to speed it up a little bit and get it in three by doubling up, et cetera. But the point is, whatever that cycle is, you have to be aware of it so that you don't undermine your success. The other key is the level of your desire. And that's, that's the game right there. If you don't want it badly enough, and, and those of you who are watching today, whatever you desire for yourself this year, do you want it badly enough? I mean, do you want it as badly as you want to breathe? You know the story of the young man who wanted to get an understanding for burning desire. He said, well, what's this burning desire? I want a lot of things. And his teacher took him out into the ocean. They were near the beach. And when he got to the water, it was about up to his neck. The teacher held him underwater. And he held him underwater. And the, the student began to flutter and whatnot. And just when the student was about to gulp in that water and drown, the teacher pulled him up. And I know many of you have been swimming and been underwater. You know, when you're underwater and you, you're trying to come up and you know how badly you want to breathe. Well, your desire must be just that strong. As strong as you want to breathe, your desire must be. So how do you develop that type of desire? And that takes us to really the keys to developing your habit of persistence. In the book, you may refer to pages uh, 190 and 191. But the first key to really developing the skill of persistence and by the way, persistence is a skill. You can practice persistence. You get better at it. You get stronger at it because each time you have a victory, it builds your self-confidence. Lynette is a realtor. And I guarantee you, until you sell that first house, <laughs> you can have some serious doubts about where, whether this realty thing is really for you. But once you sell that first house, like, man, I got it done. Then you sell the second house, like, hey, I'm really good at this. By the time you're selling your third and fourth house, it's old hat. It's like, I can do this. So as you accomplish success, you build your self-confidence. And that helps you strengthen your level of desire. Someone once said, I think it was Winston Churchill said that success is really the ability to move from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm for success. So in life, I mean, many of us have been part of the failure brigade. <laughs> you know, I mean, some of us have failed so many times, you might think that failure is your middle name, but that's okay. Because when you reframe failure so that failure is a dress rehearsal for success, the more times you fail. <laughs> hey, Lynette, thank you. Lynette said something very powerful, folks. She's a real estate person, and she says, I keep the finish line in mind. I keep the finish line in mind. We often hear the thing, what's the saying? Keep your eye on the prize. That as long as you can see the finish line, you know, there's a reason when horses come around the... Uh, the, the, what they call it, the far turn, and they come into the, the home stretch where you determine who wins or loses. They often have blinders on the horses so that they can't see to the right or to the left, and all that they can see is what's straight ahead. Seeing and focusing on your vision, on your goals, 
is what gives you the level of design to make it happen. So the first key is to have a clearly defined, now listen to this, internalized vision, internalized representation of your goals, internalized representation of your purpose, and a burning, a deep desire for its realization. I want to paint a picture for a moment. If your life is a boat on the sea, on the river of time, and I think that's a, a good picture. The river of time is always flowing into the ocean of eternity. Each of us is a boat on the river of time. That boat that is our lives essentially has four elements. Number one, you have a crew. And the crew is often the people you permit to come into your life to be a part of your dream, to be a part of your vision. They may be a spouse. They may be somebody you have a relationship with, maybe a business associate. But your crew is any of those people who you permit to come in close on you, who you permit in your home, who you permit in your dream. Then you have a rudder. And I think really the rudder is first. And the rudder is your core beliefs, your value system, your sense of being. And so if your rudder, your core beliefs, were formed in your childhood, and many of them, most of, our, most of our core beliefs are formed in our early years. We may take them apart and replace them later, but in our childhood, so if we were raised in an environment of, of criticism and, and, and negativity and lack of love, then that creates a value system that's very different from someone who was raised in an in a, in a environment of love and, and of encouragement. It's not fatal but at least you know what you have to deal with. So that rudder is your core values. Someone once said that a friend is a person that you can trust with your money, <laughs> with your wife, with your life. If you're surrounded by people you can't trust with your money, you can't trust with your wife or your spouse, then you certainly can't trust them with your life. The thing that you add people onto is your core values. It's always important to know who you are before you start getting into relationships and bringing people on board. One of the great mistakes we make as young people is we get so hungry to have relationships with other people when we aren't even clear about who we are. So often we end up with one person who doesn't know who they are, coming together with another person who don't know who they are, being together as a team, as a unit, who doesn't know where it's going. So that rut is your core beliefs, and that you may have to work on, but know that the rudder will always guide you. Then you have the, the sails. You know, on the, on the river of, of time, the sails are what propel you based on the winds the winds around you. So your sails are like the external forces operating in your life. So you may have sails where everybody is positive and uplifting. Then your attitude can be congruent with that and, and you take advantage of the mastermind concept. A lot of positive people doing positive things. Good things happen. Your sails may have to go against the grain. Maybe it's a wind of negativity, a wind of loss, a wind of of, of, of these things that you don't want. And then you have to set your sails in a different direction so that those winds don't affect you. Have you noticed that there's some people that no matter what happens, they always seem to come out on top. They say you can drop a cat and the cat will always end up on its feet. There's some people that no matter what happens in life, no matter the tragedy, no matter the, the blessing, whatever it is, they always end up victorious. A lot of times it's because of the attitude, the set of their sails. So you have the engine, you have the rudder, the crew and the sails. The most powerful part of that boat is the engine. 
and the engine is your design. And so the engine in a boat, you ever notice sailboats? Sailboats always have an engine or row or oars. You know, in the old days before they had engine, engines, you had sails and you had people rowing the boat. Because there are times when the wind is not blowing. And the river of time, though, is always moving. And so unless you want to go wherever the river that wants to take you, you have to have something that can guide you. So maybe when your crew checks out on you, maybe when the, the winds are blowing against you, maybe there's no wind at all. Maybe when your, your value system is right there, but there's nothing to work with, you know who you are, then the one thing that keeps you going is your desire. So today, I, I think all of you should look at the things you want and get a good sense of the level of desire you have for those things. Your that desire must be so big that it's bigger than the obstacles. So often we'll look at something we want to be doing, have we say it's too hard. You just eliminated yourself from the results. Look at it and you say it takes too much money. How many times have you looked at something you wanted to have and you say it just costs too much? Well, if you wanted it badly enough, you'd figure out a way. So when we talk about persistence, persistence is directly related to your level of desire. Persistence really comes into play when there are obstacles, when there are things that are blocking you from doing, being, and having what you want. And so desire is the lifeblood of persistence. That's number one. Number two, that whatever your goals, whatever your vision, break them down. When you look at your vision for where you want to be, break them down into specific goals because to put Persistence to work, it must be persistence about something. Your persistence must be directed at a particular outcome. So once you can break your vision, how you want your life to be, and break it down into goals, now you can focus on those outcomes. When you focus on them, you can create a level of desire strong enough to make it happen. You need a plan to be persistent. You see, persistence always requires focus, and focus requires a plan. In order for you to be focused on any particular outcome, you must have a plan for that outcome manifesting in your life. If you have no plan, it won't happen. You need friends. You need a friendly alliance with people. No man is an island. It's a great poem. And so... As you move on your success journey to create, to create the vibrations necessary to make powerful things happen, you need an alliance with other people. Some people call them mastermind group. But you need an alliance. You need a crew of people who believe in you, who believe in your dream, who believe in your goals, and who are willing to help you. It's always a two-edged two sword that the people who want to help you should have a benefit too. People always wonder what's in it for me. When we look at politics, we're in a political season now. Everybody's promising everybody anything because so often it gets down to what's in it for me. But our vision sometimes must be bigger. Maybe it's what's in it for my people, what's in it for my country, what's in it for my state, what's in it for my family. That's the nature of sacrifice. And many times we may have a personal goal that's incongruent with our family goals. If you have kids and a family, then there's certain things you just can't do. You just can't walk into work one day and say, I'm depressed. I want to quit my job. I don't have any savings. I don't know how I'm going to feel my family, feed my family. And so all of this must be you know, in the context of who you are and where you are in that point in your life. So a friendly alliance of people can help you. When you have a family and you're on a mission, especially as an entrepreneur, you need to have your family on board. We just saw, uh, what's the guy, Tom Brady. I mean, he's been playing football since, <laughs> since, the, since the beginning of time. And they made a big thing when he quit, when he retired and, I guess he and his family, his wife got together 
And once he decided to go back, I, 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 you know, like I'm, I don't know them personally, but I can see from the outside, it looks like she said, okay, I've had enough. If you're going that way, I'm going this way. And so whatever that alliance was that they had that not only made him great, but made everything great. So when he had that, that family, that common vibration, that support of the family, he was an incredible quarterback. You look at it now, I mean, there are a lot of other factors, but in a very simplistic way, when whatever the vibration is that was your family, that was your support group, when that's changed or not there, it changes your capacity to create things that you desire. Realize that failure is just a dress rehearsal for success. That when you are building your persistence, there are so many times you're going to hear no. There's so many times you're going to be disappointed. But just look at them as another step towards a yes. You know, in sales, they said, give me the no, because the more no's I get, I know that there's a yes coming down the pipe. So always look at failure as a lesson, never as a defeat. So you either win or learn something. So when stuff doesn't happen the way you want it to, ask yourself, what is the lesson I should learn from this experience? Number six, realize that something for nothing is impossible. Folks, anytime that you know, you've heard it over and over. When when you when something sounds too good to be true, it's probably not true. Someone got involved with a program that sounded too good to be true. And then they were shocked when they when the program ripped them off, when they took the money out of their bank account and all kinds of nasty stuff happened. Say, well, how could the world be so cruel? No. That law, something for nothing is an illusion. So if this thing looked too good to be true, all you got to do is show up and they're going to give you the money. I see it all on the internet all the time. I, just, I get these texts, you know, I have $1,000 waiting for you. Click so you can get it. I believe in your project. You don't even know who I am. Doesn't even have my name on it. <laughs> Dear comma, <laughs> I believe in your project. <laughs> I want to give you $1,000. And then you're going to click on it. Mm. seven stop wishing your life away you got to convert a wishbone to a backbone there are always going to be confrontations and you have to stand up and be counted if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything persistence requires you to have some backbone and to be able to draw a line in the sand and say no more and finally to realize you got to do it now. Persistence is a real-time activity. You can't put off being persistent. Persistence is an activity that you always do in the now. So let us wrap up, folks. I hope this was meaningful. I hope this was helpful today. Because as you close out this year, there are going to, going to be many challenges to the results that you're seeking. And the thing that you must know that if you persist, if you hang in there, if you just don't quit, it will happen. So let's review quickly. How do you develop your art, your skill of persistence? One, have clearly defined goals that you internalize in your feeling nature. These goals become the, the heart, the fire of your desire. To look at that vision for yourself and break it down into specific goals that you can focus on. To say, I want to be happy is not enough. What causes you to be happy? I need financial security. That's a goal. I need a positive relationship with my other. That's a goal. I need to be available for my children to do homework and to be a present parent. That's a goal. Have a definite plan expressing continuous action. Have a friendly alliance with other people. You need a team. The crew you bring into your life can take you to heaven or to hell. Number five, realize that failure is just a dress rehearsal for success. Number six, there's something for nothing is an illusion. Anything that you get that you do not work for, any environment in which you reap where you have not sown is a setup for failure for disappointment, for loss. 
Number seven, stop wishing your life away. Convert your back, your wishbone to a backbone. And then finally, number eight, to do it now. The persistence is a real-time activity. I hope this is helpful today, folks. Hey, Sade, thank you. Platinum Shops, thank you for joining us. But if there's one thing that will make the difference between creating the life that you desire or the life that somebody else wants for you is your ability to be persistent, to hold on, to hang on, to be like a postage stamp, to stick to your job until it is done. And you can do those things. You can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have anything you desire, always knowing that the best is yet to come. Wow. <laughs> hey, folks, thanks so much for being with us today. Be sure to visit our website, www.herbertharris.info. Listen to this broadcast. Get your copy of the 12 Universal Laws of Success. When you go to our web tree, our, the web tree, our link tree, herbertharris.info, you'll see links to get anything you want. Our books, our home study course, freebies, the Wealth Building Audio. So check it out. Also, you can make an appointment to talk with me directly. Anyway, folks, Dr. Herbert Harris saying, remember this, the best is yet to come. And so it is. <laughs> Let's sing it on out. Here we go. The time to love is here. <laughs> hey, folks. Here we go. I say, come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these troubled days be done. I tell you, come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these troubled days be done. 